risen yes. upon yes. you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, friends. Amen. My name is Val Wolf. Um, we have a healing ministry called Christ Healing Center. You can have a seat. <laughs> um, I went into the ministry about seven to eight years ago, and uh, I started off in a denominational church, and uh, after about three or four years, the Lord called me into my own ministry, and I just praise God for what He's doing in the denominational churches as well, because He's moving, and people are becoming more open to the Holy Spirit, and uh, it's really a wonderful time uh, we're going to have today in His presence. Yes, so, this is... Um, this has been taken from some of our healing services. We had a healing school last year and the year before. I see some of you from uh, those past healing, um, healing schools that, that have come along today. Um, that was from two years ago and uh, a few healing services that we've had. Even in the healing services, we've ask people to lay hands on others. So it's not about a, a, a certain person, or it's not just about me uh, praying for the sick, but it's about each and every one of you um, going out there to do the same. And um, I've also ordained a number of people, okay? And uh, we didn't even have to ask permission of the bishop. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay, all right, so praise the Lord. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyway, all right. So my mission is to train and equip people uh, to flow in the supernatural um, where miracles, signs, and wonders happen, to see people healed, delivered, and set free. Now, we're going to have a section on deliverance today, and uh, I'm also going to be showing you a short video as well where these uh, demonic spirits actually speak out of people. Um, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's good that we don't be ashamed as to what actually happens. Um, okay, all right, so this is the exciting gospel of Jesus Christ that should be happening in our churches as well. I'm not too sure about casting demons into pigs, but I'm sure if we saw some, we, we'd go for it. Um, this is what Jesus did. But he also said that greater works shall we do, because he goes to be with the Father. So we can do all these things. Jesus turned over tables and he was so radical. Jesus spat. Um, I haven't done that one as yet. But you know what? If the Lord leads you to do it, you do it. So, hallelujah. He cursed the fig tree. We've done that a few times in our garden. And um, cast out deaf and dumb spirits. <coughs> this is what happens all the time in our ministry. A lot of deaf and dumb spirits come out, things like epilepsy and uh, deafness and um, blindness are actually healed once that spirit comes out. Um, raises, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Now remember he said that we to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers and to raise the dead. Freely we have received, freely give. And I'm sure the Lord's going to give us all an opportunity at some stage in our life to pray over somebody who's dying and expect to live. So praise the Lord. And um, just as we go further into the Word of God, we see that you know, Jesus came up over the hill and he said, I'm here. And they all just fell backward. Uh, so fell out under the power of God. Daniel was in a deep sleep. And the disciples fell on their faces. You know, friends, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Adam fell in a deep sleep. But, you know, I love the scripture. The glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And it fell on my face. And the priests could not stand to minister. Because there was this whole kabod of glory that they couldn't even walk into the place. The, the glory of God had filled, had filled that temple and, and they couldn't even stand up. I tell you, friends, our flesh cannot stand up under the power of God. So praise the Lord. And we're going to see that today. Um, so often we sit in churches, three hymns, praise and worship songs, 
sermon, goodbye everyone, go home. Okay, now remember friends, we need to understand that that is not the church that Jesus built. Now I'm going to be speaking the truth in love today because we're going to be connecting back to the book of Acts. We're going to go back before all those divisions began to take place. So we're just connecting back, we're plugging back into the Word of God from that, from that particular point. And you know, the book of Acts doesn't have an amen at the end of it either. So we're still in the book of Acts today. So hallelujah. And remember God's ways are not our ways and His thoughts are not our thoughts. So His thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. Right. Hagar 2 verses 9. Friends, the book of Acts, as I said, it doesn't have an amen at the end. We've all read of those wonderful miracle signs and the wonders that the disciples did and the early believers did, but many seem to believe that that has passed away. But remember, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. Uh, Malachi 3 6 even says, I am the Lord and I do not change. Um, and it is God's will that we do even greater miracles than what Jesus did. Okay, It's, it's not a, a matter of pride. It's just that Jesus said we would do greater works. because, And it's not like we're doing those greater works. He is doing it through us. Okay, so God gets all the glory. We get the blessings. God gets the glory. Okay, it's good to make that point right at the beginning here, that this is all about Jesus. It's all about His divine works working in and through us. So it's got nothing much to do with us, but He needs a vessel. He needs somebody who's willing to lay aside all man-made tradition, lay aside everything that is not of God, and just begin to take up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, but you know, I believe that we living in a day where God is going to grow up arms and limbs, uh, ears, you know, all these things that, you know, we think may be impossible. You know, the Bible says with man it's impossible. Sure, it's impossible with us, but not with God, because with God, all things are possible, and to them that believe. Yes. Okay, there's a prerequisite there. Okay, so we have to believe. That's one of the most important things. Okay, but uh, many churches are not moving in the gifts today, but I believe that you're going to be taking that back. We're going to have an impartation at the end. And, um, you know, I, I just noticed from my healing school last year and the year before, uh, it's just so amazing to see what people have actually done. And... Um, They've, they've gone back and they've really set their churches alive for God. Some people had to move churches and some people were actually able to move within their church. And uh, it's really awesome just to see um, how God moves in and through them. Another thing I just want to um, point out to you is that there's, there's no cookie cutter way in how to heal the sick. So God moves in and through me. He, he, you know, we see the arms and the legs grow out. But if you just want to lay hands on the sick, you'll get the same results. Um, so don't think that there's a hard and fast way. Uh, this is the way that the Lord works through me, I'm sure. And I know that he'll work in and through you the same way as well. But, uh, you know... Uh, there is no hard and fast way. Jesus did so many miracles. You know, if, if there, there weren't even enough books really to cover the amount of miracles that Jesus did. So um, we must be open to these ways as well. And uh, you'll see the power of God moving in and through you. You know, sadly, um, the Bible does say that we do perish in a lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. We can't reject the knowledge of the Word of God. It's so important, friends. I'm not here to bring down religion or a denomination in any way. I, in fact, I work with them. 
uh, but there are some that will just literally shove the Holy Spirit out of the door. And it's sad. I've seen that. I've, been, I've even seen that happen in churches that I have been to. And uh, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit's just left to sit outside, there's no power, there are no miracles taking place. People are coming to church um, sick, and they're going out sicker uh, at the end of the service. Nothing happened. It was just a social club gathering where they saw their friends every Sunday. But sadly, no miracles took place. How many of you have read that book, Placebo, that I sent on the email? Okay, now that is an eye-opener. It's an absolute eye-opener. There's Howard Pittman, just to some of you who haven't read it. He died, he went to heaven, this was about 1979, and um, the Lord rejected him. A minister, a minister. Friends, there are people sitting in churches nowadays that are not going to heaven because they haven't followed, they haven't been obedient to the Word of God. And I say this in love because I got halfway through that book and I actually started crying because when I saw that, you know, when I read that part where Howard Pittman was uh, standing there with the angel and he was looking at the tunnel and there were people going by and the angel said, do you know that 2,000 people have died on earth at this particular time, but only 50 are going. And that just really cut to my heart. And, uh, you know, thank God that he gave him a second chance to come back. He even took him through the second heaven. Many people don't believe that they're demons. And there are principalities and powers out there. And that book explains a lot about what we fight against. A lot of people say we don't need spiritual warfare. It's all about love. I tell you, friends, we really perish at a lack of knowledge. Yes, it is all about love. It is all about Jesus. But we need to know our enemy. We need to know how to fight him. Because uh, Marlene would know we go to the hospitals every Thursday and we see people who are dying. People who are dying. You know, and it's really, really sad to see how some of them will just reject the Lord. They want nothing to do with the Lord, but even some of them, you know, who are, who know the word a bit, but, you know, they haven't had that relationship with God, and so this is what the Lord is saying in that book, that he wants that relationship, it's not just about doing the flowers in church, or playing the organ, or singing in the choir for 40 years, or 60 years, or 80 years, it's, you know, it's, it's really about a relationship with Jesus Christ. So it's not by works, it's really about our relationship with the Lord. And, you know, that breeds the anointing. Our relationship, our, close, our closeness with the Lord, uh, the more miracles. You know, I, I, just, I just found at the beginning of my ministry, I saw a few miracles take place. And I thought that was really great. But then as I grew with the Lord, you know, there's that scripture where the Jesus grew in stature and, and you know, and in faith. And um, just as you grow with him, as you spend time with him, as you get to have this heart merger with the Lord, so you'll get to see more miracles take place. I just believe that the Lord just allows you to see greater miracles just as he grows you. But I found it doesn't happen overnight either, you know, so please... Um, I've been encouraging a lot of people lately not to give up on their ministry. I've got some pastors who have been uh, at the end of their, their road, really, and they phoned me up and said, you know, I've had enough of this persecution, and uh, I just can't really continue. And I've sat there with them, just encouraging them, you know, you can't, you can't leave the call of God in your life. If God's called you to do something, you've got to do it. But um, so praise the Lord for those folk, and yet I've also taught them the, the, the truth of the Word of God, so they're now flowing in the gifts of the Spirit as well. It's really exciting to flow in all those gifts. Um, for 30 years, I didn't see anything happen in my life, I never saw a miracle, and yet there's this God who created the heavens and the earth. Friends, 
Well, you know, I've said. Many die really because they reject the word of God. They followed their own ways and they thought they were right. Okay. But the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Once It's the known truth. It's the knowledge. It's the known truth of the word that actually sets you free. And that only comes from the word of God. And friends, it's not by might or by power. It's not by your might. It's not by your power, but it's by the spirit of the living God. Um, and, you know, I've had many pastors, uh, especially from Mamlazi. Who's here from Mamlazi? Anyone from Mamlazi? Good, I can speak about it. <laughs> All right. Um, many people who would come up to them, uh, to people to get them delivered, and they'd actually shake them. In Jesus' name, I command you, devil, get out. And they'd actually hit the person so hard and uh, expect that demon to go up. But... Um, they were amazed at the way I did it, and you know, I just basically said to them, "It's it's you using your might and your power, and it's not by His spirit." So, um, so praise the Lord. They're now flowing in those gifts, um, but it truly is. It's uh, when we just take our hands off of the control and we let God come and move. Um, he does. He really does. You know, some people say, why do you welcome the Holy Spirit? I say, well, he's not welcome in every church. Um, but anyway, he's, he's very, very welcome to come and move here. And Paul, he never, he never preached a sermon unless there was a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. He says that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's why we take our hands off of the control and we let him move. Hallelujah. And um, so Paul relied totally on God and he preached with power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. So we must, we must actually preach the gospel with proof. Have we not got enough seats? Praise the Lord. Should we bring them to the front? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> really great to see you. I do have a chair here, I don't think I'll be using it. But we need that chair for the growing out of the legs. Oh, thanks. There's another chair. Oh, I don't know if I want to also God also bearing witness both in signs and wonders. God bears his witness in signs and wonders with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Remember the New Testament believers' prayer. It said, by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Um, so there he is working in and through the apostles, and he's going to do the same through everyone who, everyone who does what? Believes. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. The apostles went everywhere, fully preaching the gospel, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Yes. Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So here's a scripture, really, that proves that a, a fully preached gospel must include signs and wonders. And they went out everywhere and preached. They went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Okay, we're not alone. We're not alone in this walk with God. Sometimes you may feel you are alone, but no. Uh, when we've got the Holy Spirit in us, we know that God is working with us. And He's confirming His Word. The Bible says He's watching over His Word to perform it. So he's just looking for somebody who would go out there and lay hands on the sick and expect them to be healed. A lot of people lay hands on the sick, but they don't expect them to be healed. Okay, and it says confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Um, so a, a lot of signs and wonders uh, followed them in those days, but remember Jesus hasn't changed. He's the same Yesterday, today, and forever. He won't change. We change, in fact. Um, 
So this is what God wants for the church. And when Jesus began his public ministry, it was a ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders. And really those signs made them wonder. But friends, we need to run everything through the filter of the Word of God today. Because I found that not everyone, everything taught in a theological college or seminary um, or Bible college is true. And not everyone uh, who writes a book and all the Bible, not, not every teacher and author is really preaching the truth. I've seen that lately, and I'm not here to bring them down, but what I'm saying is run everything through the filter of the Word of God, okay? Um, test the spirits, really, to see if they are of God, because there are many false prophets out there, okay? But we, we're not here to, to bring people down. We're just here to really preach the truth in love. So it's important to know that the, the teaching that you are sitting under really is lines up with the Word of God. And I believe that you're in the right place today. Hallelujah. So, yes, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone into the world. Okay. There are also those that have a form of godliness, but deny its power. What is amazing about that scripture is the last part of it. From such people, turn away. Have nothing to do with it, friends. This is what I did three years ago. I saw no power in the church that I had been to, and I, I left. I absolutely left, and for me, it, it's been a great thing, because God was really allowed to move in a greater way, just as I allowed Him to um, so, here we have it, Mark 6, verses 7. And he called unto him, unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. So we're going to see that just now. If you're sitting there with an unclean spirit, we're going to drive that demon out today. Hallelujah. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Friends? The success of your ministry, that is the key. Repentance. Preach on repentance. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil, many that were sick, and they healed them. So if you're a believer, you can heal them and get them delivered from bondage. There are many people who need deliverance from evil spirits, and you'll be amazed. You may even be sitting there and not know that you have one within you, but it's going to go today. Okay. So praise the Lord for that. Hey? We do not rejoice that the devil submit to us, but rather we rejoice that our names are written in heaven. Okay. Uh, largely over the past year or two, the Lord has used me mightily in deliverance. I remember at the beginning of my ministry, I said, God, this is great healing ministry, really great. And then he said, well, now it's time to move on to deliverance. And of course, healing and deliverance go together. So I was casting these things out, but I didn't expect them to speak back at me. And I remember the first time it spoke back at me, there was this lady, she, was, she came to our home, and uh, she had an alcoholic spirit. And uh, all of a sudden, I just started praying for her in, you know, like the normal, in Jesus' name, get out, whatever, it said in this deep male voice, now bearing in mind this is a lady, okay, who are you? And I thought, oh, okay, you know, but then eventually I just kept on commanding it to come out, it was my first really major deliverance, and she fell to the floor, she said, I cannot stand this power anymore, and she came up and then, uh, as she came up, I said to her, Michelle, how are you doing? She says, fine, how are you? <laughs> Needed to take a shower after that one. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Well, um, <laughs> let me just go lie down for half an hour and figure out what happened there. But she was delivered, and she's completely on fire with God today. That even though she had given up the alcohol, that curse was still there. People don't realize that, that those things still 
stay in them. And uh, she was tormented. She had these things grabbing her back or whatever. So I didn't know what I was up for. But I remember the Lord just prepping me before I prayed for her that day. I, I spoke in tongues for about half an hour or so. And I was pleading the blood of Jesus over my family, over my life and all that. And that was just... And it was an amazing start to deliverance. And I had specifically asked the Lord, please don't let them speak. But then he said to me, but then that's not my gospel, is it? Okay. So we have to be open. We have to be open to every part of the gospel. And yet, after a while now, I'm quite used to it. Um, we see it happen quite often. But people, once they're exposed... People get healed, and that's the most important thing. It's amazing to see what God does in their lives after they've been delivered and set free. So, okay, so they went out two by two, and they preached on deliverance. Uh, as I said, that is a major key. A lot of people will not preach on repentance. Uh, they don't believe that you have to repent for anything, you know, because Jesus has already done it all. Um, they say, it is finished. Jesus has done it. There's no need to repent. But he's done his part. We haven't done ours. Okay, a lot of people perish in a lack of knowledge uh, because they, they, have, they have unforgiveness or they have bitterness towards um, others. And then they wonder why they aren't being healed. That will go into the root causes a little later on. Um, I'm actually in the process of writing a book. Uh, as to why people don't get healed and uh, why do we suffer. So I'm hoping to get that out in the next few months' time. But just the general healing questions for those who are seeking healing from the Lord, just so that we can accelerate their healing and get them healed, even if it convicts them, okay? Remember, the Holy Spirit never condemns you, never condemns you, but He will convict you. He will lead you in the, in the way that is, is the pathway to, the, to his light, at least. Okay, now this is a scripture that changed my world upside down. Um, I was seeking my own healing, and I read, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall get well. And perhaps it's just because I've got childlike faith. I looked at that scripture and I said, what a lie. God, is that true? And he said, I'll show you. And then I started laying hands on sick people, and they got well. And then I thought, well, that's fine. If they can get well, I'm going to get well too, because I had a streptococcus pneumonia virus, a sinusitis, oh, for many years of my life. But I also found out the root cause. My father had left before I was born, and I had rejection. And I had told people, he's died, I don't know. I still haven't even met him to this day. But my heart wasn't right. It was a lie. You know, even though I had that rejection, um, I did not acknowledge him. Yes, he is alive today. <laughs> but um, I actually learned to forgive him for that rejection. And uh, I've been well ever since. And uh, praise the Lord. Sinusitis is a terrible thing. Especially when you have three operations that don't help you. But the Lord is completely restored. I, I don't actually have a problem to this day. So praise the Lord. I had to forgive my father. Friends, if any of you need to forgive anyone today, please, from your heart, forgive them because it's not worth living in that bondage. And I lived in bondage for many years because I had unforgiveness towards my father. Okay, Not really feeling that love, feeling a bit rejected, but not knowing that I've got a God in heaven that truly loves and accepts me for who I am. So God is so good. Okay, so this is the commission that the Lord gave to us. He gave it to his disciples and he said to them, he said, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Well, Okay, and it says these signs will accompany those who believe. Okay, it will only accompany the believers. Because if you're an unbeliever, don't go casting out devils. <laughs> They'll turn on you. Alright, it says in my name they will drive out demons. 
What? The believers? This is crazy. I never heard about this for so many years. Okay, the believers are going to drive out demons. So you can imagine how I found, uh, you know, over seven, eight years ago, um, I've, never, I've never heard the scripture before, but now all of a sudden I've been sitting in church for 30 years and I, I think I'm a believer, but I haven't driven out any demons. I, I didn't speak in tongues. Um, okay, the snake's part is just a promise of protection. Okay, it's not physically go out there and handle snakes. Um, but it says when you drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. Um, Okay, that's just a, a protection uh, from the Lord for us. If we're out there, you know, in the middle of our lives, or wherever we are, knowing that, you know, the Lord will protect us. And uh, he says they'll place their hands on sick people and they will get well. This is the commission. He didn't say establish a, a, a bunch of church members and um, appoint some leaders. No. His command was to them that believe. So how many of you are believers here today? Amen. Hallelujah. I, I didn't see all the hands go up. Hey. How many of you are believers? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, remember, we have to be in one accord. <laughs> if we're not in one accord, then we're not going to see these great and mighty miracles take place. Um, you know, at the time of Pentecost, um, when the... Holy Spirit came down in these wonderful tongues of fire. There were 500 that were originally there. I always wondered why were there 500 and all of a sudden it was only 120 when the Holy Spirit came. Let me tell you why. They were all in one accord. Okay. The Lord waited till the unbelievers and those who really weren't about the Lord's business to go away. And he saw this crowd of believers that were all in one accord. Bam! He came down. And, and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they all just started going, Shabbat, and they could see them. And they were so filled with the Holy Spirit. I tell you, in the first time I was just touched by the Lord in that way, I, I was so excited. I ran off to Eugene and I was speaking in tongues in front of him and he got so excited. He says, I want this. What is it? You know? And then he started speaking in tongues. And both of us are speaking in tongues in front of our children. And they're looking at us like we're crazy, you know. And I said, you need the fire of God upon you. So there we all are speaking in tongues. And um, yeah, so, uh, but we're not crazy. How many of you speak in tongues here? Okay, so today is going to be a day for the rest of you as well to move in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And we can't do it without the baptism of, of the Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, without the baptism of the Spirit, many churches just believe in one for repentance, the water baptism. It's great to get that baptism. But the Holy Ghost baptism, man, you can't deny that. You really can't. And um, once you get that baptism... Yo, I went nuclear. <laughs> nuclear, I tell you. And um, just started winning souls. Without that baptism, you cannot be a witness. You cannot be a witness. Alright, but we're going to get on to that very shortly. So, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Wow. But the point here is the teaching part of it. You know, Jesus taught a lot. Whatever I teach to you, I want you to take that and, and, and teach others as well. We cannot keep this to ourselves. Freely you've received. Freely give. And, and the way to get the anointing is to give it away. Yes. And the more you give, the more you receive. So praise the Lord. He gave it to us. Jesus taught the disciples to do the same thing that he did. So we must do it too. And he told us to give away what he had given to us. 
and that's what I'm doing today. So hallelujah. You know, I could choose to keep this information to myself, but really that would be disobedient, really. Um, so often you see one person out there doing wonderful miracle signs and wonders for God, but there's no teaching. There has to be a teaching. We have to teach everyone. Just, you know what, the devil hates what we're doing today, friends. Um, but praise the Lord, people are going to get set free. You're going to receive your own healing today. If you've come here just to even receive your healing, you're going to get your healing today. Whatever it is, the name of Jesus is above every name. It's above cancer. It's above arthritis. It's whatever. It's above an earache, even tooth. I've even heard of people getting new teeth put into uh, their mouths. So there is nothing impossible with God. I want you to just take the limits off of God today because He has no limits, really. It's, it's just really our doubt and unbelief that stops things from happening. So we're not going to let that happen today. So He's given us all authority. He's given us authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Friends, it's important to know that you are seated in heavenly places. There are many people who are scared to cast out demons because they don't know their authority in Christ. We need to know that we are seated there with Christ. When I pray, I don't pray from an earthly realm. I pray from the heavenlies. You'll get more results happen that way. Um, just a bit of advice there. So, you know, it's like a, it's like a policeman. Um, the police officer doesn't have any power as an individual, but his relationship with the law really gives him the right to use that power. So really, we as believers in Christ have been given that authority to cast out demons. And um, casting out demons, um, speaking in tongues, laying hands on the sick, it's a mandate for every believer. Just as I said, cancer is a devil, arthritis is a devil. Um, people don't realize this, and, and they sit on all these medications or chronic medications for many, many years. But really, once the demon is cast out, free, free. Um, and, you know, quite often I've seen that even at, at my home as well, uh, where people come and then they ask, they ask me, you know, something that I've even put on the notes as well. Should I go off my medication? You know, as ministers, we are not medical practitioners. So I tell them that's between you and your doctor. Go to your doctor and uh, we never tell people to go off their medication. A few years ago I was suffering from high blood pressure. But I decided myself to go off the medication. You know, that was just between me and God. And, you know, I haven't had a problem since because I just learned to trust upon the Word of God. But uh, please, when you are praying for the sick and they say, should I go off my medication? Some people say, well, if you've got faith, you can go off your medication. But friends, not everybody has that level of faith. So please do not tell anyone to go off their medication because some people have died and they've gone off their medication and they thought, you know, sure, you know, this teaching is really great and uh, I believe God and really, you know, there is a bit of doubt there. So please uh, don't go off your medication. Okay, so hallelujah. But praise God for doctors and nurses and for what they do. What an amazing commitment to help people out there. We really need them. We need the doctors. We also need the spiritual um, brothers and sisters in Christ who know the Word of God. Um, I used to be on I used to be on medication like it was crazy. You know, um, I even landed up with a yeast infections from the antibiotics. And uh, even up until recently, with the stomach pain and, and all that, but you know, I learned to just go off of that and trust the Lord, and I'm completely free and, and healed today. But you know, just as we walk along with the Lord, things will happen to you. You'll need to take medication at times, so um, there's nothing wrong with going down to the chemist and getting a disparate or whatever it is that you need. 
uh, just be encouraged to tell people that you pray for, um, to continue on their medication if they feel like one person who got a bit of an insulin shock after we prayed for them, um, <laughs> after uh, you know we said to them, well, you need to go to your doctor first. You know, you've been healed now. You don't need all these things, but go to your doctor first. You know, so that could be a big problem. It could be a big back backlash in your healing ministry if you tell people to go off their medication. I just wanted to stress that um, in a great way because. Um, some people are so quick to tell others to go off their medication, it's actually not our right to do so. It's not our right to even prescribe creams and all that. I don't even go there. Um, so uh, I'd rather just flow through the Holy Spirit and uh, it doesn't work for you, go to the doctor. Yeah. Let's just play it safe. So praise the Lord. You know, this is an uh, amazing scripture because a lot of people feel that they need to get all these theological degrees and all that, and that's fine. It's good to get those things. But um, it says that when the courage of Peter and John, when they saw the courage of Peter and John, they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. They had spent time in the Word of God, and, well, with the, with the Word of God, Jesus is the Word, yes. So they had spent time with Jesus, learning His ways, and then the Pharisees were like so amazed, you know, and they were wondering why God wasn't flowing through them. But these people had spent time with the Lord, and that's why they were able to see some wonderful miracles take place in and through them. You know, God uses weak vessels. To turn, to turn the world upside down. Uh, the twelve disciples, yeah, they were all unschooled. What were they? Fishermen. Um, you know, Jesus even took the physician aside, or Luke, and he showed him a better way. So, um, hallelujah. I mean, what were they? Fishermen. What else were they? They were, they were tax collectors. Uh, so, you know, he chose those people so that we could just really relate to them. If we all, uh, you know, come from various professions and we're just out there in the workplace. And he's called each and every one of us as a believer to just go ahead and uh, lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover. You know, some people wait for a great evangelist to come into the country and, and that's where their faith is at. You know, a lot of people receive their, their um, healing at those services because uh, that's their point of contact, like that lady with the issue of blood. Uh, so you see lots of people, the Benny Hinn, and I love, I love Benny Hinn. Uh, how many of you love Benny Hinn? Oh, he's a sweetie. Okay. Um, a lot of people receive it because that's where their faith is at. Now, if you read um, Acts 3.16, um, has anybody got a Bible here? Acts 3.16, what does that say? <coughs> yeah. Pastor David here. Uh, oh, in his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and, and know here. The faith which is in him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Amen. So it's the faith. Okay? It's, it's the faith. Where, where's that scripture there? Okay. It's his name through faith in his name that has made the man strong. So it's by faith in the name of Jesus that you receive healing. Okay? There's no other way. It's not the person. Okay? There's an anointing that flows through each and every one of us. Praise the Lord for that. But... Um, you receive your healing by faith in the name of Jesus. And it depends on where your faith is at. And some people go to those services and they believe that that's where it is. Sadly, there are many people who don't receive their healing at those churches because there are root causes that need to be dealt with. So there's so many things, there's so many ways on how to receive healing. And uh, so I'll be glad to get that book out in a few months' time. But... Um, Okay, I keep them going off the track. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When the Lord takes over, you can't really stick to notes. But anyway, um, let's get back on track. 
So we, we can't be lukewarm or stand on both sides of the track and really compromise the Word of God. We need to make a commitment today, really, um, that we're not going to practice sin. I'm talking about willful sin here. God's looking for, for pure vessels. You know, some people say, well, anybody can lay hands on the sick. Well, you know, the Bible says that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I've had some pastors lay hands on me and I've actually had to break it off afterwards because I've had a bad dream or, or, you know, check out people. I know some of you check me out, yeah. <laughs> just to see that what I was doing was of God. And the thing is, God wants righteous people. Um, there are many pastors out there with the spirit of lust and to pornography and all that. Do you really want people like that to lay hands on you? Because they can actually transmit it on to you. Um, I've had many people who, who have come to me and say, well, I had, I had somebody lay hands on me and now I've got this sore thing in my arm. And we've broken it off of them. So, friends, you know, let's, let's, let's put sin aside. Let's try our best. We can certainly try our best to live a righteous life in Christ. I believe it's so important because only prayer and a relationship with God has the ability to really <coughs> wipe off those carnal ways. And, you know, friends, wherever Jesus went, he healed the sick. Uh, whether you're on a trip in the Mediterranean, or whether you're on a cruise ship, or uh, wherever you are, at spa. Many times I've prayed for people. I remember praying for one lady. Um, she, she couldn't get a packet of chips that was at the top. And I said to her, um, she actually asked if I could help her. So I got the packet of chips, and then I noticed she had carpal tunnel syndrome because she had those... Uh, scar marks and I uh, asked her if I could pray for her and um, she looks at me like I was crazy you know these kind of things don't happen you know but I just get ready go I don't care what people think about me I just go for it and I said to her well can I can I pray in the name of Jesus oh yes I know Jesus and most people do <laughs> most people know Jesus but uh, yeah <laughs> but um, I laid, I laid hands on her and uh, I also sort of flicked her, her arms a little bit just to make sure that she had that strength afterwards and uh, she started to, oh, this is fine and then she took off the little bandage that, that there was there and then she started doing this and you can imagine what people thought in spa, you know and I just, hello, hello <laughs> But there she was, you know, and I said, keep on doing it, you know, and the more she exercised her faith, the more came round. So then she's walking over to the cashier going, wow, I'm healed, hey, you go spa and get healed, hey, it's good for you. <laughs> okay, so, there are, yeah, there you go, spa. <laughs> okay, so, wherever you are, you know, in your workplace, um, looking after children, pray for them, pray over them. Or even in your own block of flats, somebody is needing healing, somebody looks like they need a devil cast out on them, you get radical. <laughs> okay, alright. So we will get on to that. Right. Okay. So. It's important really to know that Jesus never prayed for the sick. <coughs> you know that? He never prayed for the sick. He commanded people to be healed. He commanded healing. Um, also, healings are not always instant. Um, don't let your faith waver when you pray for somebody and you don't see something happen instantly. I always look for instant miracles, and they do take place. But um, some people get healing over a week or a month. Or some people over a year. It took me a year. So, you know, I believe in that time God deals with our emotional issues, our heart issues. Um, so we need to really in that time, even though we're waiting for our healing to manifest, 
get into a relationship with Jesus. So friends, we're going to make a total commitment now. We're going to get on to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And um, you're going to be praying in tongues before you get back to your seat. So I know there are quite a number of you here today. Let me just give you some information on that first. Um, let's just make a commitment to the Lord. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Okay, hallelujah. It's always good to just make that commitment again to the Lord. Many people have prayed that, but they haven't changed. Okay, They haven't put off the old man. We need to put off the old man. Okay, Jesus said that, that we would receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, that's a scripture um, that I should have put up earlier on. It's just saying that he's going to do greater things than these. He says, I'll tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to be with the Father. It's so hard to figure out that we're going to be things than God. But he said so, and we have to just simply believe it. So, hallelujah. You know, just, just on, on, on that point, I had a um, gentleman about two years ago. Um, I don't know if some of you know him, Wilson. You know Wilson, eh? He um, needed a new heart. And I called one into being. I said, Father, I speak a new heart into being. I remember the look on some people's faces, but at that time, you know, I just thought, well, okay. Father, let there be a few others that just believe me. Yeah? He came back two weeks later and his testimony is on my website. He's got a 16-year-old heart. God, okay? This is the reason why we had Easter. Resurrection Sunday, okay? This is the reason why we're here. Because of resurrection. Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And some people seem to think, well, that's it, you know. All he did was die for our salvation. No. Psalm 103, verses 3, says that, Forget not all my benefits. He forgives our sins and he heals all of our diseases. You can have a look at that. Psalm 103, verses 3. He forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. All of them, okay? From the cancer to the gangrene to the toenail infection, whatever the problem is, he just wants to touch us today. Right, so now we're going to get on to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see some real wonderful things happen now, okay? He said that we'll receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us and. Um, Without the Spirit of God, there is no power. No power. All right. He said that, that um, well, in fact, we need the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives in order to manifest the fullness of God um, and to walk in His power. These gifts of the Holy Spirit are powered uh, by the Holy Ghost, so we can't do them without the Holy Spirit. We need Him in our lives. We need Him to operate in and through us. Um, Acts 2 verses 3 to 4 uh, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now every believer is called to speak in tongues. There is the ministry gift of tongues which is the gifts of the, one of the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost but then there's the prayer language, which is for each and every believer. Just that scripture that we went into, Mark 16, verses 17, which says that these signs will just follow them that believe. Okay, so the Holy Ghost baptism um, is evidenced by speaking in tongues. It brings power, and without the Holy Ghost baptism, we can pray for the sick, but with the Holy Ghost's baptism, we can heal the sick. That's the difference. Okay, so anybody can pray for the sick, even if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But, um, you know, we really, really need the power of God to flow in and through us so that we can actually see people healed. And we need to be filled with that empowerment. 
so that we can be greater witnesses. Uh, God said that we can do it, uh, not for a denomination or some division out there he doesn't believe in. We base our knowledge on the Word of God, not tradition. Okay, friends, don't let the teachings of man block you from receiving. Now, for many people who come from the old churches that you know, they battle to move in the gifts of the Holy Ghost and that's because they've heard incorrect teaching uh, that, that tongues is not for today, but the Bible does say that it is for today. So, um, you know, many people say, well, my church doesn't believe in tongues. And I say, but God does. He said, these signs will accompany them that believe. Friends, I have such a passion to see people moving in the fullness, in the fullness of, of what God has already ordained for us 2,000 years ago. And I remember a priest came to me and said, well, Pentecost is coming. And I thought, my friend, that came 2,000 years ago. You know, Pentecost is not coming. That happened in the book of Acts. Uh, we need to flow. But if they're not open to it, what can we do? What can we do? We really need to just follow the Word of God in its entirety. So... Anyway, okay, it says they appeared to him divided tongues as a fire, and each sat upon them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and uh, other tongues. So I just want you to clear your mind now. Any any teaching that you've heard that says that tongues is not of God, or that many, many have said that tongues are of the devil. The devil does have his own tongues. Yes, he counterfeits. He does counterfeit, but. Um, the Lord, um, the Lord will reveal to us if anything is not of God. And of course, we're in an environment now where we're going to receive. So I want you all to come forward now, um, especially those who don't have the Holy Ghost baptism, who don't speak in tongues. Okay, it's not a matter of condemnation or anything like that. Um, please come forward, those who who haven't moved in the gift of tongues yet. And of course, it's going to empower you to use those gifts of the Spirit. Please come forward. Even if you do speak in tongues, let's all come and encourage others. Okay. Hallelujah. Yes, get your standing on holy ground. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, so we all want to move. We, we want to be... Witnesses, we want that empowering power of God to flow in and through us. Okay, so just open your mind to receive now. Okay, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to start. To speak in words, um, we can start off. You see, that, that we need to make the sounds. Okay, we can't just stand there and hope the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And then, you know, we've got to make the sounds. So, like I'm speaking English to you, um, uh, you can take words like katama. So, take words like katama and, and, and ask the Lord to, to grow on it. So, say, and the tongues is not or or no, it's a language. It's a prayer language, okay? And it's going to accompany us. And I believe that we're all going to flow in it today, okay? I don't believe if you already do, but so then you can encourage those around you who are not flowing in there. Okay, let's go. Yes. 
Paul said he speaks in tongues more than anybody else in that area and um, it edifies you. Uh, it, it, I mean, who, who else can speak about the experience with tongues? I'll give you a minute, okay. I just want to encourage everyone in here because when I pray in tongues, I pray in tongues a lot in the car. And when I'm faced with circumstances, I go very strong in the spirit and something happens to me. There's like the supercharged dump in this power that comes over me. Praise the Lord. Yes, absolutely. So praise the Lord for that gift that he's given to us. Hallelujah. Right here. Commanding healing. Commanding healing, yes. <clears throat> I want you to think of a friend. Um at work that needs prayer, says to you, 
Will you pray for me? I have bad back pain. I've uh, been suffering for many, many days. Um, many of you would say, well, I'll pray for you, but then you wait till you get home, or you write it on the list. <laughs> you write it on the list. You can imagine if Jesus had a list. Uh, I've had many people, uh, they ask me to put them on the prayer list. And I say, hey, you know, that's just too many. I've got too many. I would rather pray for you right then and there. But now, uh, friends, um, this is what many people ask. They, you know, put me on the list or I'll pray for you later. And then later on you think, well, oh, I forgot to pray for so-and-so. Hey? How many of you have been there? I've been there. <laughs> okay. But in the Bible, there's no, um, there's not a single, single example of Jesus or anyone else ever going away to pray for a sick person. Okay. He healed them right then and there. You know, but Jesus, said he didn't go away and say, okay, I'll pray for you. And he went to his quiet spot and prayed for you. That's, that's not how he did it. Okay, he healed them right then and there. The problem is many people are not praying for healing the way that Jesus did back then. And so they're seeing little or no results at all. So you remember me in the, in the spa with that, with that lady. Um, I didn't say, well, I'll pray for you um, tonight. Or you know, whether she even wanted the prayer, I didn't know I was going to give it to her. But... Uh, I healed her right then and then. You say, oh, you healed her. Yeah. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. I healed her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. That's the key. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So you can do that too. Okay. All right. So now think about this. When Jesus was hungry, he saw a fig in full bloom. Fig tree. <laughs> he saw a fig tree in full bloom. And when he got to it, he saw that there were no figs. No figs, all right. So he said to the tree, may you never bear fruit again. Oh, Jesus was so radical, I just love it. And the tree, it shriveled up and it died. And uh, now Jesus said to his disciples, if you have faith, you can command a fig tree to die. And anyone with faith can command this mountain to move. Okay, anyone with faith, can do these things. So here it is. Um, uh, he said, we can command a fig tree. Uh, what do you think? Jesus was giving us a, a, a lesson in gardening? No? No? He said that we could arrange the mountains. <laughs> do you think he was giving us some mountain ranging? <laughs> no, no. Jesus was really teaching us here the principles of faith. And authority. Okay, so here's another example. Jesus and his disciples are in this boat. And suddenly the storm rages up and uh, the boat is about to capsize. Jesus, what did he do? He rebuked the wind and the waves. And suddenly it was calm. Faith and authority. So it's not about the shaking or the rattling or the rolling or anything like that. It's faith and authority. So now he said that not only can we do these things, but we're going to do greater things than these. Wow. Okay, so Jesus, this is how Jesus healed the sick. Okay, a man brought a demonized boy to Jesus, and Jesus rebuked the demon. All of a sudden, he's healed. Okay, so he rebuked the demon, he commanded to go. And Peter's mother-in-law had a half fever. Okay, and Jesus rebuked that fever and it left. The, Jesus dealt with sickness the same way he dealt with demons. Okay, so important that. Some people love their sicknesses. They hold it to them like security blankets. Uh, I don't say it's in a bad way, but it's... Some people who come for prayer really don't want to be healed. It's just another root cause, I suppose. Oh, please come and join us. Excellent. Um, so anyway, he, Jesus dealt with sickness in the same way that he dealt 
with demons. He saw sickness as an enemy, and we need to see it that way too. Okay, he used faith and authority to get rid of it, and so should we. So Jesus commanded the, the fever, and um, Jesus commanded the fever, uh, which was really the demon, and he commanded the wind and the waves, and he commanded the fig tree. He told us to command the fig tree. He told us to command the mountain to move. Now, there have been many times we have commanded things to move. Um, the one time we had a whole bunch of uh, ants in our property. This was when we first bought it. A whole bunch of ants. And um, everyone was wondering what insecticide we could get. And I stood there with my daughter. It was very much childlike faith. And she was about seven or eight at the time, and I said to Lauren, you believe the Bible, eh? She said, of course not. So we stood there, we stood there on our lawn, and we commanded the ants to go. I think we commanded them to go into the cemetery, or we didn't like their neighbors or something, we commanded them. I don't know where they went, okay. All right, okay. But anyway, we commanded them to go, and within about, Eugene, three days, they're gone. They're gone. And then another time, um, which was so exciting, uh, I was going out up to our car and we saw a whole bunch of bees. A whole bunch of bees have congregated around our, our, um, our toilet area. And uh, Eugene and his parents were trying to look up a beekeeper. And uh, they were trying to find out a way to get rid of these bees. You know? So what we actually did was I stood there with Lauren again and we rebuked the bees. We commanded them to go. I think within a few minutes they had already gone. Yeah, Eugene can confirm that story to you later. But Amen. Um, you see, we've got authority. He's given us all authority. You know, don't go out there cursing your trees, you know, unless you want to pull it up at the root. Then you curse the seed and the root. <laughs> okay. But... Uh, yeah, if we have that authority in Christ, tell you friends, when you know the dominion and authority you have in Christ, you know, get out there and be radical, um, but especially with sickness and disease, you rebuke the demon. Yes, yeah, some people shout, and uh, you know, some people just speak softly. But the thing is, they go. It doesn't matter how your personality is. You know, the idea is to take authority. The, the, the whole thing here is faith and authority. And that's what moves the hand of God. Take up that boldness. Have that faith. Uh, and, and just go for it and command these things to come out. Okay, so we are commanded to imitate Jesus. So what he did, um, so what did he do when people came for healing? He Usually he laid hands on them and he always spoke healing to them right there on the spot. But the average person never lays hand on, hands on people. Um, they go away, they pray for them later, just like we said, and many don't see miracles happen because they are not imitating Jesus. Remember Jesus said, if you love me, what is love, friends? The, root, the true definition of love is, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, the world has a different view of love. Okay, But he tells us, that we need to keep his commandments in doing so. Okay. And so here are a few examples. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Ugh. Okay. But Paul went into him and prayed. Okay. So he prayed first. He probably said something like, Father, as we come, we'd like to see your Publius healed. Thank you, Lord. We believe it's done. And then after that, he he went on them and he said, get up, it's in the name of Jesus. You know, something like that. He laid his hands on them and he healed them. Now, um, when Jesus saw a crowd, uh, he was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit. And we've seen people with, with deafness get healed. It's, it's so awesome to see a healing like that. It just really, it, it's amazing. It really is. You deaf and mute spirit. Okay, the guy was deaf and dumb. He said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Okay. 
Hallelujah. So another one, Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked Jesus to help her. Uh, so he bent over her and he rebuked the fever. Anybody ever had a fever? Rebuke it. Rebuke it. Uh, because behind that fever is a demonic spirit that needs to go. Okay, You don't rebuke people. You rebuke a devil. Okay. Rebuke the fever and it left. She got up once again and began to wait on. So instantly she was healed. Why? Because that devil had gone. So praise the Lord, but uh, he commanded. Okay. The Lord says, Whoever claims to live in him, whoever claims to live in him must walk, live and act as Jesus did. So the things that Jesus did, read about in the Bible, you can do them too, and even greater things. Shall you do? Okay. All right. I want to get on to deliverance now. I'm really excited about this. Oh, don't be ashamed. Don't worry what, what happens. You're going to be delivered now. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Father, we just cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for complete healing in his life. Okay. So, just keep your eyes open now. Okay. Okay. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you, devil, to come out of this body right now in Jesus' mighty name. I curse the seed and the root of this demonic oppression. And I command you, devil, to get out of this body now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be exposed right now in Jesus' name. Get out. Get out! Get out! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Out! In Jesus' name. Get out of this body right now. Get out in Jesus' name. I command you in the name of Jesus to get out. Right now, get out of this body in Jesus' name. Spirit of marijuana, spirit of death, get out of this body. Get out. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Holy Ghost, fire over him right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the praise and we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name for setting him free. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. He's been set free. Amen. It's gone. Amen. It's absolutely gone. And Amen. all praise to God. Amen. What's his name? Taku. 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 Yeah. Taku. 
How you doing, brother? What happened to you there? Huh? Jesus was pulling me out. Tucker, what, what were you saying? Something something was pulling at you? Jesus. Jesus was pulling, was pulling, pulling it out. out. He was pulling me out of it. He was pulling you out of it. Yes, like I was in a pool and I was drowning and he pulled me out. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoa. Amen. Amen. So Amen. it felt like, like you were in this pool yes. and the Lord was just yes. lifting yes. you out. Amen. Wow. What an awesome God we serve, huh? Eh? Amen. You feel free. Oh, praise the Lord. Why don't you give him a, give him a, a good hug? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good, Hallelujah. Wow. He has done great things for you. Praise the Lord. How are you feeling now, Tucker? You feel light? Yes, yes. Extremely light. And free? Yes. The chest is loosening. Oh. Amen. Amen. Uh, I used to, you know, I, I would pray, I would pray, I would pray, and everything would be fine around me. Everything would be fine around me, and I would be like, oh, when I see demons manifesting or whatever, I would say, ah, well, maybe they, they, it happens because they, they did witchcraft or something like that. So I didn't know that that could happen to me through the use of, of uh, smoking marijuana.